ago I was in Kiev, Ukraine and while I was there I paid a visit to one of the most prominent Soviet aviation museums in the entire world, right on the outskirts of the Ukrainian capital. Well, now I'm in Moscow, as you know, and I just found out that there is an even larger Soviet aviation museum full of big Soviet aircrafts right on the outskirts of Moscow, 40 kilometers from the city center. Monino, that's the name of the town in the Moscow region where the museum is located, is exactly my destination for today. Let's go! I just got off the metro at Komsomolska. This is Komsomolsky Square. And now Moscow, in and around the center, has around 10 train stations, railway stations scattered all over the city. And in this square, Komsomolsky Square, there are three of them. Monino, over here is our destination for today we're here Yaroslavsky, Kazansky, Vaxal, that's the same and we have to go all the way past all these stations to Monino I reckon it's going to take around an hour or so an hour and a half maybe so we'll get there at around lunch time let's see how it goes and the train is departing from platform 16 Come on, we're late, we're late, we're late! Wow, настоящий советская электричка. train is approaching speeds never seen before. Look at this. Nice guy is sleeping with vodka on the side of his bed. It's now getting hot. The sun is shining down on me directly. There's no AC. So that's our destination for the day, the Central Air Force Museum. And we're still quite a long way from there. Yeah, so it's 30 minutes until we get to uh, Monino train station. And then from there we will have to walk approximately 15 minutes, I'd say, through the city. It's gonna make for quite an interesting walk, isn't it? Woo! The next one is ours, Monino. And so I made it to the beautiful city of Monino, such a metropolis, 20k population, just 25 miles from Moscow. The train ride was pretty good, I must say. You could see the, the amazing Sovietness of the Elektrichka, the suburban train that took me from Moscow all the way to Monino. And I'll just have to make my way out of the platform and then 20 minute walk for the museum. So it's around 2 o'clock. The museum closes at 5. But I'm hungry. 
I don't have that much time, that means I have to cut some time and eat while I'm on the road. In the same day that I will get a tour of the magnificent Soviet Aviation Museum, I'll also be able to jump on a tour of this amazing small town of Monino. Let's see what awaits us here. Nice Khrushchevka over here, not too different from the ones that you see in Moscow. Lovely! Although I literally had only bread, as you can see. You know what they say about Russia and the fact that feminism doesn't exist, doesn't have a place here in the Russian Federation. And look at this! The pinkest house building ever. Only females allowed. Look at this. Always double check when you're going and when you're traveling through the Russian provinces. In fact, right as I got off the train, I blindly trusted my GPS, according to which I was on the wrong side of the platform, so I crossed over the platform and then I continued going straight. But my GPS failed me and apparently that was the right side, so I have to go back all the way to the to the platform station and then continue on from there. But still, it doesn't matter, it's still 2 o'clock, museum closes at 5, I should have a couple of hours for myself to enjoy pure and uh, majestic Soviet aircrafts. Now, I just have to find a way to cross the platform to the other side. Здравствуйте. А подскажите, как можно э, переехать на другую сторону? А, вы знаете, там есть подземный переход. Чуть дальше вы, вы пройдете. Вот. Кон... За серым зданием. Там вот увидите, mm -hmm. вот чуть ниже, вот так дорожки прямо пойдете. I found the way. I just have to continue a little bit down there. I'm not quite sure. Like she went on and on. There was quite a bit of a lengthy explanation, but I think there's going to be a gray building that I got. Gotta continue left. And I will see the um, the overpass. So let's see. Would you ride this Russian underpass? Yeah, that's one thing I got wrong. There wasn't. There was no overpass. That it's actually an underpass. Let me rephrase it. Would you cross this Russian underpass? at 2 o'clock at night. Let me know in the comments. I wouldn't. Would you? They say that no Russian city can be truly Russian if there is no bust or statue of Lenin, Vladimir Lenin. Well, for Monino, no exception was made. That's pretty much as far as science will take us. Musée uh, VVS. Oh, that's not BBC, by the way. You might have been thinking that that was Musée BBC, but BBC has no branches in Russia, and that was just the Musée Vienna Vozdushnik Siel. And that's where we're going now. And by the way, Vienna Vozdushnik Siel is the name of the museum because. Uh, the museum is not strictly just about Soviet aviation, as in the name literally translated from Russia is Museum of Military and Aerial Power. And the museum also has some exhibitions and some uh, pretty much uh, military vehicles from the Cold War. А мы тоже ищем, знаете? Something tells me that I am really close. Yeah, boys, I made it. 
And there are so many people actually. I wasn't expecting these many people considering the, the, the roads and the streets around the museum are for the most part deserted because it's not right in the center of town, it's a bit outside, of course. If you're a fan, the Central Air Force Museum of Monino is a must. The exhibition begins in two indoor hangars before moving outdoor for a total of over 170 aircrafts and 120 engines on display, all dating back to the Soviet era. These are the first kinds of Soviet war aircrafts. You know, the craziest thing for me when I look at aircrafts of that era and um, of those times is how the hell were these able to stay on the air for so long? How the hell were these able to fly? It's, it's insane to me. Look at this. It's like four meters long. The, the, the wings are so small compared to what we used to find now. But still, and they were able, these are the same aircrafts that were able to drop atomic bombs onto, onto uh, like enemy territory. It's insane. Look at the paintings. Look at that one in particular with uh, a scene in winter with Moscow, the capital, being under siege. You can see St. Basilius, you can see the, the, the military planes flying over it. When you make your own visit to the Monino Soviet Aviation Museum, remember to bring some drawings that you can do and you can hang here. What's your favorite? Moving to the outside part of the exhibition, visitors learn immediately the history of the largest helicopter ever built, the Mil V-12. Only two prototypes were built in the 60s and their mission was the rapid deployment of heavy strategic missiles. They have, however, been mostly grounded since then. Oh my god, what even is this? Just look at this absolute unit of a helicopter! The second most fascinating piece of memorabilia in the museum is the Tupolev 144, the Russian Concorde, the first supersonic jet ever. It flew for the first time in 1968 and was able to reach speeds of over 2,500 km per hour. Aeroflot used it to service the Moscow Almaty route because it passed over mostly underpopulated areas. I guess most of my audience might know about the Concorde, which is the Western, let's say, supersonic jet. But this was first. This was actually first. And it was actually quite similar, as you can see from the picture here, as it's just about to take off. Like the Concorde, it has to remain well sealed inside the, the limits of this amazing museum. Not far from Moscow, really. Also with the old... Oh, you can also see the old Aeroflot logo over there. Here's another absolute unit for you. An-22, takeoff weights more than 200,000 kilos. 